Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be reviewing a couple of poetry books. So here I have Dinner in the Fields by Attractor Faye, and Alcoholic Betty by Elizabeth Horan. So I'm going to start with uh, Dinner in the Fields, and basically what I'm going to do is just read out some of the poems that I enjoyed to give you a feel for them, and I'll give a rating to each book at the end. So The Woman in Waterside House. I have no reason to trust sympathy. When I tell you I hid for 13 days, waiting for marks to disappear, I asked if I provoked him. The guards called the beating a domestic. Social workers and welfare insist boxes be ticked, slight disgust in their faces. Even so, when you're leaving, look for maintenance. And then the forms and forms, and the council informs me the waiting list is years long. And the judge doesn't want to know. Perpetrators, he says, have rights. He convinced me that I cannot live without him. I am nothing and no one cares. I'm alone. I cannot leave. Easier to pretend my life is full than to face the shame in your eyes, mine and the shame of the world, when you are a woman with a fist over your face. This one's called Moon World. It's lonely here, I said to my son, my ears holding his voice, travelling thousands of miles through ether. My eyes gaze from the window, moon floats on night sky, stars watch. I miss you, maybe I could visit. Mum, you cannot follow your children around the world looking for meaning. Go by yourself or stay at home and write a poem. Through the lump in my throat, I muttered, true. This is Enduring Utopia. They, the soul eaters, sons, daughters betrothed to institutions, have usurped my womb, my son, ravaged my mind with privation. Now they want my body. I am slave at the mercy of food, a weapon. It chokes me with their need. They think I am frail, bring plates with teeth, wild animals attack me. I cannot tell you, as you come towards me with your large platter of nourishment, I am terrified it will eat me, that blood in its contents will soak my bones, trigger primitive instinct. My stomach refuses to digest your utopia, where the witch's flame is quenched. My gut has a voice too. She becomes a wild animal, bloated with feeling, fat with lies, seeks revenge for the killing. She eats not just your food, your plate, your power, she swallows my smile. I've built a wall of starvation. No one enters, not even me. And this one is called The Priest Said. There was nothing dignified about my father's death. He drowned in a slurry pit. It was a cold, wet Saturday evening in March. People going to mass followed the priest to our shed in the field. I had slipped amongst them, unnoticed, searching in, hope, searching in hope of finding him alive while hearing their prayers for his dead soul. I watched from a distance the ambulance, fire brigade, guards and neighbours with slurry tanks to empty the pit, shrinking into gut-wrenching pain as the search had continued for seven hours. I was there when he was pulled out, like a calf just born. Later, sealed in a brown bag, he was thrown inside our front door. When he called to our home the day my father was buried, the priest remarked what a dignified family that people had mentioned. We were. We had not cried. My siblings proud of his praise. I stayed silent. Here we have a diagnosis slash my daughter speaks. I remember when my mother forgot simple things like where she left her hairbrush. I helped her find it. Okay, and one more poem here. Perhaps. It's all about finding a taker for what you're offering. I have a dark side, for instance. My smile hides shadows, the underside of tiny petals. Forget-me-nots, its snippet of sky, a dark undercover. Fibonacci sequences weave like industrious ants who create for the sake of it. So all in all, pretty much enjoyed this one. There were obviously some poems that I didn't enjoy as much, but overall I gave it a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. So now we're moving on to the one that I really enjoyed, which was Alcoholic Betty by Elizabeth Horan. So I think the best way to um, introduce this book really is to read, there's an introduction. So we'll start off with this. Uh, for my family, I'm so sorry for the pain I caused. Love, Elizabeth Jane. And here we go, so it's a prologue. And this kind of tells you what this whole poetry collection is about. So I'm going to read you the whole thing. Buckle up. Dearest reader, I am so honoured that you are holding this book in your hands. Thank you. Writing this book was one of the most difficult things I have done in my life. Remembering and wallowing in the pain, humiliation, the shame and the guilt of the drinking hurts and brings up memories I prefer to hide from. I spent the majority of the last 20 years hating myself for the pain I caused with my actions. I lived with a penance, hating myself, condemning myself to mental annihilation for the shame, for the shame of the terrible decisions I made, the selfish ways I found to numb myself. But why did I drink? Because I was hurting. Because I had been hurt by others. I didn't know how to deal with that pain so I tried to smother it, to medicate myself. Did I hurt others on purpose? No, I don't think so. I hurt myself intensely and ceaselessly, and in doing so it caused pain to those who love me. That is the reality. I didn't mean to hurt anyone, and I am sorry to those I did, especially my husband and my family. I can't take it back. 
my actions, my decisions. I can only move on to try to be a good person and help others to remember their own self-worth and heal. So this book for me was a way to do that. To let others out there who may be drinking and may be self-medicating know that you are not a horrible person. Just like I am not a horrible person. I am a person with flaws and pain and a past which I wasn't able to cope with in a healthy way. There is much pain in these poems, yes, but I also pray that you see the hope in this book. If I was able to live the way I did for 20 years and still be here now writing poems, mothering my children, living and loving others, then there is hope. Hope for anyone struggling with addiction. Forgiving oneself is hard. It is so hard for me to forgive myself. But if I don't, then I am not helping my children. I need to use my pain to help others now. I need to be strong and use the pain and lessons of my past to try to make the world a more forgiving and gentle place. Others have forgiven me. My husband, my family. And now I need to forgive myself. It's time. I paid the dues of self-hatred and shame for so long. And by writing these poems and finding the courage to share them with you, that is what I am learning, what I am trying to do, to say, Elizabeth, it's time to let go. Time to love yourself, be strong and heal. With endless love, tender care and solidarity, yours truly, Elizabeth. So I'm going to read out some of the poems. So here we have In the Ward. Content warning, difficult content regarding inpatient mental health. I am good for nothing in the ward. Christie's here for sucking off the principal. Linda's here for the sliced up arms. Deanna bangs her head on the wall. Dump, dump, dump. Her patch of bald, shiny as a kettle. Brianna and Sarah, what a pair. They don't eat. They are so strong. They are lighter than air. They don't give in. Don't stash the brownies. Like me, fat pig. Nurse Patty found it. Tus tusk, tusk, Elizabeth, for hiding your food. Fodder for art therapy. Tomorrow I will draw a picture of a fucking fudge. Brownie. Like a pile of shit smudged on my face. Punishment for being so disgusting. For wanting a brownie. Hiding the brownie in my pocket at the dining hall. Fingering the saran wrap. Holding its crumbs in like an invisible jog bra. Get getting to my room. Saving it for later. Under my journal. Top drawer. Side table. Dump, dump, dump. Her head's got it in for the wall tonight. Teapot seeks its bald Frankenstein. Linda's in the bathroom with a stolen Gillette razor. Savouring the blood as it slithers down her elbow. Christy is incorrigible with a head resident again. She taunts him. If you let me suck your dick, I promise I'll eat my meds. Brittany and Sarah come freewheeling down the hall, smiling at each other, proud of tonight's numbers on the scale, 74, 72. Starving happily, feeding tube in place of a belly piercing. Amenorrhea has taken hold of the reproductives. I want to be them. So thin, so strong. They don't steal food or cave into desire. I imagine stuffing the shit brownie in my fucking fat ass face. Then Nurse Patty comes for night check. Tusk, tusk, Elizabeth, she says, as she flushes it down the toilet. So this is called Why I Love Owls. Do you know what it's like to be fat? Fat is like being thrown out a car door for not knowing how to suck cock. Do you know what it's like to hate yourself to the core for being thrown out of a car door for not knowing how to suck cock slash being fat slash for being fat? Do you know what it's like to try to die from the act or non-act of eating? It's like being called fat over and over again and then being thrown out of a car door for not knowing how to suck cock slash for being fat. Do you know what it's like to fail to die from the pathetic fail of trying to die from the selfish act of eating and or the selfish act of non-eating or the act of throwing up one's insides? Like a selfish little bitch who is a whiny piece of shit about her stupid wasted life. It's like being fat. It's like being called a fat les. Like wishing I was a fat les instead. Like failing at gagging oneself. Like failing at gagging oneself with a disgusting cock. In the hopes of some kind of acceptance by an asshole wannabe logger named Levi. By an asshole wannabe logger named Levi, who hath monikered you fat troll, who tells you to suck his disgusting dick, slash in a Chevy S10 with not enough buds to ever make it doable, slash tolerable. And he takes your last smoke, the one you would later need to nurse the choke. And he pushes you, he pushes you, you a drunken, gibbering, fat troll monikered, misused, mistaken, missing teen, out of a gaping door. Thanks for nothing but a fucking shitty blowjob. Then he drives off just like that. And then suddenly you are not fat. Neither are you cum stained. And you think, is that not an owl? Owls don't hate fat girls. Neither would an owl make you give them a blowjob. Owls simply don't behave like that. Here's one that I related to a bit. Um, oh, I was dead at 29. Doused and lit with bikini lines. Smoking men on my red hots. Leaving them in gutters. Ten in one pot. I know what you mean. I really do. My cervical spine is fused from looking over my shoulder, the muscles tired of all the rubbernecking, they done snapping back. What did I think I would see with all this scouting out behind me? Alejandro, El Pendejo, flying in from Mexico, name redacted, with his apology for raping me at 16. I can only tunnel vision now, no periphery, I'm done with hashtag me too, if I've no one left to tell it to, no careers to ruin except my own with tales of the gropings in blood clot dawns. Baby mine, don't you cry for me no more. I don't need her, I don't need anyone. 
I need water. Endless geezers want to wash the grime off me. Burn with sulfur any trace of violations which occurred on the dermatological construct of me, daddy. I lied, I need you. You knew I was coming back around with this. You know my tendency for neediness. But, it's, but it is only with you I behave in this way. I don't smother any others these days. I let them go easily, like old coffee spilling in the driveway, our histories dispel as smoke even as they pivot away from me. I will be okay, alone is really good, alone is what I make of it, and death is only a month away. The prior repertoire of eating souls is not for me anymore, I only need you. Light be crave, get me through this night again, give me one good dream that is not of broken bottles slashing, trolls hidden in the casings, hot dogs penetrating, showers of gold teeth cascading, children lost forever and naked, predators in the woods instead of chickadees, flitting around snatching babies. This is why my neck is fused from the midnight run, I must have been talked in. My hapless pillow form till the night had passed through in another fatal storm. Okay, here we have the rules. No sex without drinking. When drinking, find someone to kiss. Never be far from a store. Always have money or someone who wants to buy you things. Always be prepared. Lighter, smokes enough for six pack, plus a six pack extra. Never admit anything. Never show love. Never be happy hungover. Don't eat when drinking. When eating, don't drink. Always have backup plans like in a war. Don't get caught. Be ready to run. Be ready to shoot. Don't let them see the real you. Wear masks and gloves and makeup. Never admit you are hurting others. Never admit you are doing anything wrong. Never look inside. Never stop to ask, what did I do? Here we have, why can't I stop? I have to get the 12 pack, the cigarettes, two packs, I equals hepatitis. I can't not get these things, have to get some money, have to fuck somebody. Get to the store, get these things, get what's coming to me. I have to feel them burn my throat, I cannot go to the party without, I must have a beer, I must have enough to get through the night. How will I get to the store? How will I do it without them knowing what I am doing? I have to, I cannot exist without this intoxicant. My mouth must have, my blood must sate with, the alcohol, I am nothing without it. With it I am so funny and cute and sexy, without it I am haggard and ugly, and anxious and terrified, and dying. This is, I'm so sorry mommy. That time when I was so bad, when I said, ha ha ha, I'm fine. Of course I'm not fine though, drinking too much. I'm sorry your baby is a bad, bad girl, such a bad, bad woman. Humiliating to the family. Just look what I've done to the family. No, I can't have kids. Too sick. Oh fuck, I'm fucking God. I am crumble shame with no top cover. I ruined the vacation in Jamaica, out dancing till 5am with the resort DJ. I ruined the vacation in Cancun, out dancing with the pool boy till 1 the next afternoon. Bad, 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 bad. Stupid girl, such a stupid woman. I guess it's my fault I can't stop, but I am also wondering, why the hell did it start? Though there is seemingly no end, there must have been something terrible to invite the beginning. That, that first crisp and biting drink, the terrible derangement, subsequent pact with the devil, the insanity. This is called Methods, uh, another content warning. Content warning deals with suicidal thoughts. If you take a bottle of hairspray and hit yourself in the head with it, even if you do it as hard as you can, it won't do much. It's a physiological response. Our minds tell our bodies not to injure ourselves. It's really hard to knock yourself unconscious with a baseball bat or golf club. Your arm just won't want to get enough momentum and even though you are trying really hard, will probably not make sufficient contact with your skull to kill yourself. That's why I like drinking. It's sure fire. It's slow. Hell. This is called, and they say, poor woman. I don't know why I drink. For the way it makes me feel, I guess. So that if I hurt you, I will remember it fuzzy-like. Like maybe you had asked for it. Or perhaps my actions were justified in the way people instinctively realise that a poor, tired, worn-out mother can only take so much and then somehow they are excused for their missteps. We all make mistakes, you know. We all do, even you. Oh, and I've made so many. Big ones. I had an abortion, did I tell you that? Of course I did. Fine, I was 18. Stupid girl. Stupidest, selfish thing I ever did. I could have had that baby, but I wanted my life. I could have had it and been a big girl and taken care of my business. Could have been a waitress, sucked it up, asked for help, but no, I didn't do that. At the time, I felt I deserved more than that. The truth is I didn't deserve jack shit. I think that's why I drink, because I took more than my share. I didn't pay back the karma, I didn't drink the Kool-Aid, or maybe I did. It doesn't matter now, I'm looking straight down the barrel of death. Grim Reaper knows I owe, God knows too. That's why he keeps it all locked up when I come knocking. I got hep, some kind of hep. Baby haunts me, you know. She would have been 26. You would have had a sister, imagine that. It's so hard for me to be nice to you. 
When I look in your eyes, reminds me how I lost her. I drink because I am a sad story, and it's a better story than the one where I might have pulled my life together. The one where they say, poor her, poor woman. Lost her man to a young hussy, lost her job, and her babies, good lord, all that drinking. So here I am, old and ugly, jaded as hell. But I got my cigarette, beer, vodka, meth, coke, amphetamines, crack pipe. Don't be like me, son, don't be like me. You'll remember the hurt as you watch me die. Maybe call some god, or maybe just the reaper. Mm-mm. 100% thought I'd film this, but apparently not. Uh, I gave this book a 4 out of 5, and there we have it. That's the end of this video. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Biggie. No, he's too busy trying to eat Oreos. You're eating my sticky tabs.